1977, I left uh, NASA, where I had been a member of the flight operations team, and I actually directed the last two missions to the moon and all of the launch and rendezvous sequences for the uh, Skylab program. I went from there into a design sequence with the shuttle and went from there into trying to be an administrator. And the bureaucracy did me in. I could not handle a bureaucracy, so I opted out and took a degree in clinical psychology, a, a master's level, thinking I might do a private practice. But what I discovered was more bureaucracy, and I knew that wasn't going to work. So I went into the oil and gas business as a, as a financier, putting investor groups together. I went from there back into aerospace as a consultant to some of the primary contractors around that were supporting manned spaceflight. And I continue now as, uh, as a consultant to management. I continue in the oil and gas business. And about five years ago, something on that order, I decided to, to rather than pursue the clinical psychology, I became more interested in metaphysics and internal growth and, and awareness enhancement. That's a pretty dynamic and diverse career you've had there, Phil. Well, how does Hemisync fall into all of that and where you are right now? Hemisync is, uh, Hemisync is one of the primary tools I use in one part of the management consulting. Management in a, in a contracting company that deals with the government means you're always dealing with, with a dynamic environment, either from money or from schedule and the information you're trying to make decisions on, as in most management positions, but especially so here, is very unstable and very unsure. And the, the Hemisync technology that is available from the Gateway Voyage and the front end available to Gateway Outreach people is the accessing of information not normally available. So I, I have converted the workshops, the Hemisync or the Gateway Outreach workshops, so that they focus primarily on information access for these management types and it enhances their ability to, to deal with an unstable, incomplete environment. Uh, my sense is that Focus 10 tends to, to deal with uh, present and past kinds of, of needed information in fair specificity. Focus 12 tends to deal with present and future kinds of information in a more general or global sense. So we spend a couple of days learning to access the, the Focus 10 and Focus 12, how to frame questions, how to dialogue with the source of the information once you learn how to, to recognize responses. And these guys then go home and are able, sitting at their desk or sitting in a meeting, to drop in and out at 10 or 12 ask these questions and get information as they need it. And they find it a great benefit with their planning work, their scheduling work, their, their own people management problems. And they really get involved in the dialoguing process. And, and in the context, I mean, of framing questions correctly so that you don't get ambiguous responses and in learning to, to frame a question in real time to clarify the response that they got. And Where are they, these questions coming, I mean, the responses coming from, though? In these 10 uh, yeah, What are you asking? Conjecture now? Is, are you asking? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I think I believe in the collective unconscious. I think I further agree with the particle and nuclear physicists who say that time is a construct that this species developed so that we could invent cause and effect. So I think the future is now. I think the past is now. I think everything that is known or will be known already exists. It's a matter of accessing that.